For years, experts in computing and cybersecurity have been giving out bad advice. And I think XKCD sums it up beautifully in this nice cartoon. So in retrospect, a lot of tips have actually made things worse. Maybe we should try to give bad advice. And I think that is worth a shot. So security tips. Don't click links to websites. Oh wait, no wait, that's that's a good tip. Don't don't do that one. Change your password manager monthly. Yes, absolutely. Hold your breath while crossing the border. Install a secure font. Use a two-factor smoke detector. Change your maiden name regularly. Put strange USB drives in a bag of rice overnight. Yeah, so you can see that, that that's some real that, that's real advice there. You know, de definitely go by that. Anyway, the subject I was going to talk about was from a news article I was reading recently on ZDNet. Well, this is actually the build-up towards it. HTTPS, HTTP secure and unsecure, and the lovely green padlock in the address bars, which you'll notice now if you're using Chrome and Firefox, they tend to do away with the green padlock. We don't say things are good. Anyway, this was kind of the reason towards a lot of the problems. So we want to start calling HTTP connections insecure because HTTP is a clear text protocol. It's as if two people are having a conversation, the third one stands next to them and listens to everything they say. That is HTTP all over. It's completely unsecure. Whereas HTTPS, secure, we do a nice certificate exchange. Well, my client system and the web server do a certificate exchange. We can then encrypt the connection. My browser is telling me the connection is trusted. There's a trust element to this. Certificate is trusted and we can talk in an encrypted form that no one will be able to decrypt in a very quick time. It could be decrypted eventually, but for the purposes of for now, it's not going to be decrypted anytime soon. And this is a subject I discussed a couple of years ago. HTTPS does not mean a site is genuine. So I'm going over old ground again. And that brings me to the news article I was just reading from ZDNet. Cybersecurity, the web has a padlock problem and your internet safety is at risk. We've been taught to look out for a little padlock to ensure a website is secure, but it's dangerous to rely on just that one detail. Internet users are being taught to think about online security the wrong way, which experts warn may actually lead them to be more vulnerable to hacking and cyber attacks. Websites that want to demonstrate their secure credentials will usually do so by displaying a padlock sign in the address bar that aims to show the website is using HTTPS encryption. The aim is to reassure the user that the website is safe and that they can enter personal information or bank details when required. Users have often been told that if they see this, in the address bar, the website is legitimate and they can trust it. However, that's potentially misleading because it isn't difficult for cyber attackers to register HTTPS domains. What? <laughs> Sorry. Let me just try and reword that to something that makes sense. No, it's not, not difficult for attackers to buy HTTPS certificates for their websites. It's nothing to do with the domain. This is why fishers are using it on phishing sites, because they know that people who use the websites think that it means it's okay when it's not. You want to lull the victims into a false sense of security. And they point out in December 2017, the television advert from Barclays Bank in the UK warned users to check for a green padlock to ensure the website is genuine. There was complaints that this advice would be misleading and the Advertising Standards Authority actually upheld the complaint. So by asking the user to notice when something's wrong, it's putting unfair pressures on them. It doesn't happen in other aspects of life. So there's the example of cars, how there isn't a warning light to tell the driver everything is okay. There's no light or alert that appears just to show that things are working as expected, and that model should be applied to the internet. Yeah, and I think that pretty much has been the way things have been going with Chrome and Firefox as the example. I know I've cut out uh, part of the screen here, but uh, if I actually click on the padlock on the ZDNet, it does say connection is secure. And I could take a look at the certificate I can see the cookies in use and the site settings. So the certificate, honestly, who would really go and view all this? All I can see is it's registered to cbs.com and yeah, CBS Broadcasting happened to be the organisation that owns ZDNet. 
yeah, cybersecurity is a challenge discipline to operate in. And yeah, that is true. We've um, done so much into trying to educate people and educating them completely the wrong way. Although I haven't really heard the case about the padlock being used so much at work when uh, people have fallen for phishing websites. Most of the time they just say, well, they're expecting an email from that person and they were expecting that document and thought nothing of it when they were asked to log into a website that kind of didn't really look much like the Microsoft login page that they're used to seeing because we have a federated login page. So it's all nice and fancy. Uh, instead, they're just seeing the default Microsoft page. And yeah, they thought nothing of that. But I know there's other examples with shops, like fake shops. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> They're going to use HTTPS to avoid any warnings of not being secure. Another point I wanted to discuss with this was passwords, because we're on the subject of bad advice, and you, and password advice has been uh, bad for a while. And, of course, XKCD says it the best of correct horse battery staple. Difficulty to remember, you've already memorised it. Yes. Oh, and don't use that for your password. I've seen people use correct horse battery password as their password. No, that's that's a really bad password to use. It's just an example of how to create a password. I, I don't believe I have to point some of these things out, but apparently you do. Apparently you do have to say some of these things. It's a kind of a, a general advice on how to create a password. Looking at the password advice from the NCSC, that is the National Cybersecurity Centre for the UK, their advice about passwords is to move away from complexity. Exactly as XKCD is saying, like, go for overall length of passwords. Use multiple words, they call them pass phrases. And really for businesses, expire passwords only when necessary. When you have a really short expiry time, of say a couple of months, what that encourages is people just to have the same short word and just put like password one, password two, password three. Yeah, that's, that's not going to help you for keeping your business secure. We expire passwords every year. But even then, I think one year is too little. You know, don't expire them. And use a password blacklist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed at how many people use the company name and password as their password. Or like even the website they're using as the password. <laughs> That's not not helpful at all. Like, well, <laughs> it's helpful for an attacker. It doesn't make your uh, protection of your information any better though. I just have to think uh, an audit we recently did at work for passwords and we told a load of people to change their passwords because they were really bad. And despite telling them that their passwords are bad, I think about 40% of them just changed a single character. So if they had, let's say, for example, password 2019, they just changed it to password 2020. <laughs> That's not good. Like password 12345. Just put a six at the end. Like, <laughs> ah, it, it is this thing. We've been giving out the wrong advice for too many years now, and I've just got to try and get the right messages across. So that's just going to be my little bit for this video. The padlock in the address bar does not necessarily mean a site is genuine. It just means your encryption is there. Sorry, the connection to the site is encrypted and go for overall length for passwords and don't change them. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.